Hey everyone, welcome to the call. Um, so we have a, an agenda here today. Um, we have um, a few orders of business. Bef before we get started, um, I believe Ryan is taking the minutes. Um, he's doing a thumbs yep. up. Uh, I mean, uh, that means yes. Um, let's uh, log all of the board members that are in attendance to see if we have a uh, quorum. Here on my side, we have um, me. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking around for both. None of the others are board members. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany is still a board member, yes. Um, and then on the Zoom, I can't actually see the Zoom, but um, I, I um, if Steve, I see Jacob, I can see now, Ryan, Jeff, um, Vesa. Yes, it's whole list. So, okay, great. So I think we have quorum, a uh, couple people missing. Uh, Mike is missing. Um, just Mike. Yeah, just Mike. Great. And we lost to Annie in the other Slack. Uh, hopefully she's coming back. Yeah, she'll hopefully transition to the new Zoom soon. Um, yeah, the other thing. My first order of business is we have to approve the minutes from the last board meeting. Correct. Um, and Megan will project them on the screen. I will. So we had the minutes from um, the last board meeting in September, which was in Vienna. And I will just share the screen so you can see them. Um, and in that meeting, uh, we talked about the bylaw changes and gave an operational update. Um, I'm sure you'll kind of remember that one. We also said goodbye to Tiffany and Vesa and Jeff and thank them for all their many years of service on the board. Uh, th those are some of the highlights that came from that meeting. So, Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions on the minutes or any uh, corrections or annotations people want to make? Um, j just to clarify for the sake of my minute keeping right now, yay though we said farewell to them, we didn't actually, they aren't, they aren't actually rotated off yet, correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. We'll rotate off until new people are voted on to replace them. Yes. Right. Okay. So the longer we take on that process, the happier our three people are leaving the board. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if there's no other questions or um, corrections, I would be good to get a motion. So moved. So Tiffany? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tiffany moved. Anyone second? I second. Sorry. Funny enough, I gotta raise my hand and unmute the mic. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's a little bit more. I was actually writing. Yeah, I was writing. Jacob seconded as you like even before you raised your hand. I feel like I compelled you to do that. Yeah. I don't know if somebody's raising their hand. I can't see you, so please use words. Um, <laughs> um, let's uh, maybe go around the room and do a roll call. It's maybe a little bit easier. Just say your name and then yay or nay. Tiffany. Yay. Jacob, yay. Steve, yay. Brian, yay. Samir, yay. Shamla, yay. Reese, yay. Reza, yay. I was there though for about five minutes, but there's no decision, so yay. Jeff, <laughs> I. Jeff. Are we voting? I'm oh, sorry, I dropped off for a minute. We're voting on approving the minutes. Okay, I approve. <laughs> cool. Okay, Great, it, okay. Yeah. All right, second uh, item on the agenda is um, some changes that we need to make to the bylaws. We actually talked about this in Vienna, as you may recall. Um, in Vienna, we announced um, that I would remain on the board, but that I would um, no longer chair the board meetings, uh, and that we uh, hope to add Adam Goodman as the chairman of the board. Um, and so in order to 
make that happen and need to change in seventy minutes. We don't officially have a chairman um, position on, uh, as part of our board. Plus, um, as we talked about, we do pay Adam some uh, advisory fees. So we also need to accommodate for that uh, in bylaws. Um, so it's really centered around making it possible for us to add Adam Goodman to the board uh, on an, as an interim chair, I should say, as we look for a more permanent solution long term. Uh, in addition to that, we took advantage um, of the opportunity to do some other housekeeping of our uh, bylaws. Um, like we added things like we meet using Zoom versus by phone and some other smaller changes. These bylaw changes have been circulated to all of the board members, so I hope you had a chance to, um, you know, to look at them in advance. Um, so, yeah. Unless there is questions, I suggest we move to a vote. Want to motion that? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I move that we approve the bylaw changes. Is that Annie? That uh, is Tiffany. Tiffany. Tiffany again. I'll, I'll, I'll second. All right. Well, so let's. Uh, that, was, that was Jeff. That's Jeff. Yep. Sorry. Let's say, you know, let's vote to approve the bylaw changes and let's do the same roll call thing. It's, oh, if that's okay. Tiffany, aye. Jeff, aye. aye. Steve, aye. Grease, aye. aye. Sham Lai. And Ryan I. Nobody missing? Jacob? Oh, I said I. Jacob, uh, Jacob was I. Yeah, I think, I think it's everybody was unanimous. Awesome, that's approved. Thank you. <laughs> Exciting. All right. Um, that's one step closer to get him to getting Adam on the board. Um, yeah. Oh, I have an appointment. And what's the next? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have another um, another item on the agenda. Another vote. We need to, or we'd like to vote on uh, extending the term effectively, or the expiration date, I guess, of the community at large uh, members. And what we would like to do is we would like to move those end dates from January to November uh, for their second uh, year. Um, so the background for this is uh, the following. So as you know, we have board members that are um, you know, appointed or elected through the nominating committee. And then we have community <coughs> that are elected by the community and Today, these terms are sort of off. The end dates of these terms are not aligned, which makes it a little bit tricky. And so we would really just like to align those so that people, their people's second terms expire on the same day or in the same uh, month. Um, and so that just streamlines our process and it, it's really, there's really nothing more to that, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, but what it means is that we need to vote uh, today to extend uh, Shamala's um, at-large position to expire in November of 2018 rather than in January of 2018. And that we need to vote um, for Ryan's at-large position to expire, uh, to expire also in November but of 2019 rather than January of 2019. All right, is there any questions about that? No? All right, then let's do great to, to move to vote on this. Uh, also, hey, um, sorry, just, just one point of clarification too. Just um, both, both candidates did uh, get an advance notice of that and, uh, and did say they would be interested just in case anyone feels like they're, they're voting for someone else's faith who's sitting here watching and they haven't, uh, <laughs> they, have, they, they are not uh, sort of, what uh, is, what? In, <laughs> it's okay with them is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, um, I guess uh, maybe we need and, and when, votes in two votes or do you want to, like Ryan and 
Shamla will excuse himself from the vote. So yeah, so let's do it as two votes. Okay, yeah, I, I think, think it's a little bit better, right? right. Um, so first, let's vote on Shamla, and that's extending our expiration date from January 2018 to November 2018. So let's do Shamla first. I moved. Tiffany moved. Second. Jacob. Awesome. Um, let's. Let's do um, let's do the roll call again. Uh, yeah, roll call. Samir, aye. Steve, aye. Lessa, aye. Jeff, aye. Yeah, aye. Therese, aye. Jacob, aye. Annie, aye. Annie, aye. Welcome. Yes. All right, I believe that's approved. Thank you, everyone. Now let's do the same for Ryan, except uh, we're talking 2019 instead of 2018, so um, we're extending uh, Ryan's expiration date from November 2000, uh, January 2019 to November 2019. And um, yeah, let's, let's get a, a motion. Tiffany. <laughs> it's tradition. <laughs> Second it. <laughs> All right, awesome. Let's do the same roll call. Reese, aye. Samir, aye. Steve, aye. Namessa, no, aye. Jeff, aye. Annie, aye. aye. And Jacob, aye. All right. I think that was everybody. Okay. Um, so that means that's all in favor and approved. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to uh, hand it off to Megan for the operational update. All right. So let me just move a few things around. So you can see the screen. Awesome. Okay. So since it's uh, almost the end of the year, I'm going to do a high level 2017 in review and talk about our 2018 themes that you'll hear more about in the new year. Um, and then also, um, I have, uh, we have two new hires I'd like to introduce. And then I'd like to just talk about um, some things coming up DrupalCon Nashville and Drupal Europe and Drupal.org. So this is our amazing team. Um, really so proud and thankful for our staff and what a great job they've done this year. Um, we had a theme this year about building a bridge to the future with goals of focused on strengthening Drupal Association sustainability and helping to grow adoption through our channels, Drupal.org and DrupalCon, and also improving Drupal.org tooling and the processes that support the, the building community. And just some quick highlights um, in terms of sustainability. Uh, we have a um, net income margin goal, um, basically like our profitability at the end of the year of 10%. And, um, and we are tracking to make that goal. We've done a great job budgeting conservatively and working really hard to exceed those goals. And uh, it's really paying off. And we also went through our financial audit when uh, we passed with high, uh, very high marks, which was great. Big thanks to our operations team for that. Uh, in terms of um, growing adoption, we've done a lot of work on that side, uh, which I think is a good benchmark to put us in an even better position next year. So uh, at DrupalCon Nashville, for example, we started to really highlight more case studies, um, whether they were technical case studies or business case studies, they focused on many different verticals. It really starts showing the power of Drupal. And then we also started creating the industry pages that starts telling that story more to the evaluator that's coming to Drupal.org. And we've been doing a lot of experimenting with some really great partners that have provided content and sponsored the pages. And we're learning a lot from this effort and starting to evolve this program as well. Uh, one of the things that's been interesting is just adding lead forms to different case studies um, associated with those industry pages and also learning who's coming to the site and looking for information. So that's been an interesting feature. That's not just about growing leads, but learning about our customer, potential customer base. Uh, on the tooling side, the team has just done an amazing job. Um, 
we've improved project updates, um, project application process, sorry. Uh, we've made it easier to find things uh, for issues with um, friendlier URLs. And we've uh, evolved the contribution credit system, giving us much more insight into what's happening um, with our community and rewarding people for time, talent, and treasure, as Tiffany likes to say. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's so many things um, that we've done this year as staff, I'm just um, always so amazed with, but what's more important is the impact it has on the community. And uh, we're starting to track different numbers and it's just amazing to see uh, how many people are building with us, working with our tools, 60,000 Drupal CI tests in 2017 alone for core, and um, over 200,000 Drupal CI tests for contrib. I mean, these numbers are really impressive about who's working with us. And, um, and then also in terms of um, how many people are coming together to learn and contribute together in real life with us, um, you know, our Drupal cons were really successful with about 5,000 people coming together. So many sponsors supporting us. It's amazing when you see um, sprint rooms filled with almost 500 people and what they're doing together. And then, of course, there's um, these are opportunities to bring in new uh, community members. Having almost a thousand new, like first time attendees at Baltimore was really exciting. Um, but even, um, I think, uh, I should say that what, what I'm also really proud of is that we have a new diversity initiative and we are now measuring the number of um, underrepresented groups who are participating as speakers. And so we have um, been putting more effort into that and you'll continue to see that. Um, and then of course, adopting Drupal with us, you know, our team has been supporting 20 million unique visitors annually to Drupal.org. That's not a small number for a small team of, uh, of four or five engineers, and um, you know, 350,000 um, visitors a month are coming to the front page, and that's who we're really starting to study and understand and push them to the industry pages and to the marketplace. And so, you know, these numbers are just showing just the level of engagement, and, and we're just really excited that the programs and the resources that we provide are providing these kinds of community impacts. We also want to really thank all of those um, individuals and companies who are supporting the association, whether it is <clears throat> helping to fund our grants or um, Drupal.org through the supporter program, or just participating in the community elections this year. Um, having 1,200 community members care about who's on our board really matters, and we hope to see that number grow over time. Uh, and so just want to say a big thank you for everything that we could all do together this year as a community. And next year, we have some themes in 2018. We just want to call out so you can see where we're putting our focus. Um, we want to continue focusing on growing adoption in our channels. Um, as Dries pointed out in his, in his uh, recent Dries note in Vienna, we'll focus on ambitious digital experiences as well as headless. Uh, we also want to help grow adoption by supporting the initiatives that make the product even stronger and reducing any adoption friction areas. Uh, we want to support community health. Um, we recognize the community has many different personas, many different stakeholders, developers, to content editors, to the marketeers, to the decision makers. It, you know, it's just so much more encompassing than what we've been serving in the past. And we'd like to kind of step into that a lot more in 2018 and start serving um, all of the stakeholders in our community. Uh, we also want to make sure as you're working together that you have the proper governance support that you need. Um, and so we have seen the blog post that the governance committee put out recently and we want to make sure that we are very focused on supporting um, the improvements around community governance where we've been asked to help. Um, and of course we want to just make sure that as part of that community health, there's just this stronger understanding between the DA and the community, what we're doing, what needs are, where we can collaborate, things like that. Um, and we also want to um, make sure there's that kind of collaboration communication being fostered between the BDFL, DREES, and the community. Uh, <clears throat> and then lastly, we want to just continue building a stronger foundation of support for the association. Um, in the past, that's you know, in the last year, that's been very much focused on financial support, which we greatly appreciate. 
but we want to expand that to not just financial support, but also just ambassadors out there in the different regions and making sure that people understand what we're doing and that they can provide the support on their local communities for the DA. So uh, we have some new hires to help us with those themes. Um, and by the way, you're going to hear a lot more of those themes because we have a community liaison who's going to help us share what our plans are and how, you know, what our work plans will be and how we're going to move those themes forward. So um, let me do a quick introduction of, or I'll, I'll let her introduce herself. But Rachel, if you can say a quick hello and introduce yourself and what you're focusing on for the community liais liaison role. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm involved in kind of, We've got this Drupal community that's amazing, uh, full of some amazing people, and we're very lucky. So, kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm there to try and help that community understand the Drupal Association better, but also to help the Drupal Association understand all of that community better um, in all of its little uh, nooks and crannies around the world. Um, now until the new year i'm working part-time so mainly at the moment i'm realizing quite the size <laughs> of that operation <laughs> um, which is kind of entertaining and kind of learning how everything works within within the within the drupal association um so i can try and make sense of it all uh, and then i shall be full-time on the job as from the start of january that's right. Well, welcome. We're super excited that you're, <laughs> you're in this role. And uh, yeah, you're, we're going to do lots of great stuff together. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And Brooke Candelaria, we've uh, asked her to step into the role of conference director. And um, in the last public board meeting, we all said goodbye to Rachel because uh, she has given us uh, over three years of amazing service and has really leveled up DrupalCon and she's still with us until January 15th so I'm not gonna say goodbye again because that's very <laughs> hard for me but I am happy to welcome Brooke here we're all very excited to have her here and let me uh, ask you Brooke to introduce yourself well thank you hi everybody I'm really glad to be here um, I actually am originally from upstate New York and I started out in public relations and moved my way over to event management which I love um, and uh, my purpose really is to further help to level up uh, DrupalCon because to me it's really the embodiment of an amazing community and I'm excited uh, to help evolve it and go along the, the themes as well that Megan has so well described to all of you for 2018 and beyond. Um, so it's just wonderful to be here and I look forward to working with everybody. That's great. Thanks, Brooke. We're really excited you're here too. Thanks. All right. So speaking of DrupalCon, just wanted to uh, let everyone know that Call for Papers is open, registration's open, so make sure you get your ticket at the early bird rate and submit your Call for Papers by January 17th, I believe is the last date. Uh, we have all of our important dates up on the, on the site, um, so you can kind of track along when, um, when early bird ends. And uh, so just make sure around January 12th, Buy your ticket if you want to get the lowest rate. And what I want to point out is that we are definitely going to make sure that those 2018 themes um, kind of percolate through the DrupalCon programming. Uh, one of the things we talked about was how uh, the community has many stakeholders and many personas. Uh, as you know, it's DrupalCon in the past has had a strong developer base and a strong developer focus, and we're really proud of that history, and we don't want to lose any of that. But, um, you know, to create that digital experience for the visitor, it takes more than just developers. It takes the decision maker. It takes the leader of the building team. It takes then the content strategists and the content editors and the marketing people who are putting in the content and running the campaigns to... Um, serve those visitors that are coming to the site or to the application and we want to make sure this event Really brings all these stakeholders together because as we like to say no chain is stronger than its weakest link And we want every link in this chain of delivering an ambitious digital experience to be as strong as possible And we can use DrupalCon to do that. And so what you're going to see is um, that our tracks are 
um, serving more personas than they have in the past. You'll see m many of the traditional ones for your, your building team. So it has um, like your back end development, your front end development, um, DevOps, things like that. But some newer ones that you'll see are the content editorial track and the user experience track. Um, we also have a technical leadership track, which is new. This is for the person who's responsible for the team building the sites. And that might be someone who works at an end user or a digital agency. We wanted them there because when we called on them and asked them, why did you attend in the past? They said, oh, we just wanted to check it out, but we don't need to go again. And we said, well, what would make you go again? And um, for them, they said, well, I really just need an uh, opportunity to come together with my peers and here, get some blue sky ideas. So what could we be doing more or differently or bigger um, with Drupal? And how can I do a better job managing my Drupal team? And so we're creating content to serve that need for that, for that track. Um, and so this is the, st the start of an evolution of our tracks where we are going to be serving more personas and you'll be seeing more of this over time. Um, and one other thing I wanted to point out is <clears throat> the theme ambitious digital experience and headless is going to be coming through uh, the tracks when you go and you read what kind of content we're looking for you'll see that in all of the tracks we would like sessions that are case studies related to that track so that we can really highlight the best of Drupal um, and also we know headless is a really big area of opportunity for Drupal adoption. And so you're going to see JavaScript highlighted in a lot of these different um, tracks as well, um, whether it's more technical or it's more on the solution side. So for example, Horizons is specifically about pushing boundaries with headless. I mean, I'd love to see someone talk about what can Drupal do with smart cities, right? There's just so many exciting type, types of topics that we could get into with these tracks as it relates to headless and decoupled. Um, additionally, we have uh, the Monday beforehand um, summits, and we're going to have um, the ver industry vertical summits as well. And that's where there's peer-to-peer -peer networking and solving of how to create better solutions for your business in a certain industry. Um, and we're going to add a new one this year, which will be solely on decoupled solutions. Um, so these are a few things to look forward to for Nashville, a lot more to come. Um, some other things that are happening I just want to point out is um, Drupal Europe events that are coming up. So there uh, will not be a DrupalCon next year in Europe, as many of you know. However, there is a group of community members who are creating a, a Drupal event that is going to bring multiple stakeholders together and the community together. Um, for people from all sorts of countries. Um, it's not DrupalCon because it's, this is an MVP. They're, they're trying a lot of new things and they're working really hard to bring this together. It's called Drupal Europe 2018. And I just wanna um, say a big thank you to this group who's putting this together. Um, I've been working with them. Lots of hours are going into this and I know it's gonna be great. You're gonna hear more from them as I understand it. Um, in January in terms of location. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and then I've been working with a committee of this great group of people um, to work on a new model for serving DrupalCon in Europe. And that is a um, you know, the licensing model that we talked about. And we've done a lot of research looking at best practices that TED uses for TEDx and how they scale their conference um, around the world. And um, they have, uh, their best practice is really rules and tools. Make sure there's really clear rules and that the, whoever gets the license is properly supported with all the tools that they need. And so we've been putting this together and figuring out um, the process for applying for a license and what those rules ought to be. And we are getting ready to release that this month so that those that are interested in licensing uh, DrupalCon and hosting it in Europe will know exactly what they need to provide and by when. Um, and we'll have some more news on that in the next week or so, but we're really close to releasing it. And just want to say a big thank you to this group because they are putting in a lot of extra time as well, helping me think through this new model, which is not only going to help serve Europe, but once we figure it out for Europe, we get to scale this and we get to now hold DrupalCons in places all around the world that have been waiting for many years to have a DrupalCon. So that's pretty exciting. All right. And so that is it. Awesome. We have a little bit of time for a Q&A if there's questions from 
uh, people on the Zoom or people in the room. <laughs> All right. Any yeah, questions? There's, uh, there's a oh, some questions. chat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, there's many chat in chat. Jeff Walpole is thanking the volunteers for helping with the European event. Lots of other thanks, but no questions. Awesome. Well, it's a great update. I love all the the process, progress, I should say, not process. <laughs> I like process too, but I like the progress that comes from the process. Um, you know, seeing the innovations um, on Drupal.org, for example, is something that we haven't had. Mm -hmm. And just seeing that regular cadence with, um, you know, improvements is awesome. And it's great to have more people on the team. So welcome also from me. Um, to these new team members and you know I feel like things are heading the right direction so it's an exciting time um so yeah if there is no other questions i think we can adjourn the uh, public part of the meeting and then we have some more business to take care of in the uh, executive session that's right so, so with that um anyone who is a board member stay on. we're going to use this zoom for the executive session and for those that have joined us um I thank you for joining, and I'm going to have to ask you to <laughs> hang up. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Bye-bye. You. You. you don't have to go home, but so, you can't stay here. Yeah. <laughs>